Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we're going to make something fun, a little bit flashy. We're going to be making cloud shadows. And in the meantime, we're going to be uh, learning a little bit about some, uh, some basic material techniques and uh, also um, light functions. So as we can see here in, uh, in just my default little tutorial level, we have a light source, which is a simple directional light component, which you can place into your actor, uh, or into your, into your level, uh, via the place actors tab, if we just type in directional light. Or if you, on the left, just click lights, uh, you'll see all the different lights that you can place. The one that we're going to be handling, though, is the uh, directional light. So, uh, the first thing we'll do in order to make our cloud shadows, I didn't want to make that, we'll just delete it, is to make a material. And we'll call this one clouds underscore mat. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll call it a material. And we'll open it up. Uh, so really, it's going to be a light function. I'll just I'll snap this up here to the top over in material domain, convert this to light function, and you'll see that our main material node has been reduced down to just one output, that is the, uh, or import rather, that is the emissive color, similar to a, a post-process material. And when we're just dealing with light, um, we're just dealing with, usually we're just dealing with like grayscale, um, sort of black and white zero to one values uh, with our light function. And uh, traditionally you can use like IIS profiles. I I've covered a lot about lighting in previous videos. You should definitely uh, check that out. I put a link in the description. Uh, in this, in the case of this video, we're going to need just one texture. So if we hold in T and click, we get a texture sample. And the texture is going to be clouds underscore M from my texture pack, which you can grab off Gumroad. I'll put a link to that in the description for sure. And then with our texture sample, um, let's see what we do first. Well, we'll start. Uh, uh, it doesn't take too much explanation. We're going to be using this one texture with some UV controls and a panner to make it move. And we'll mask it against a copy of this same texture. So you can duplicate that with Control W. And uh, let's get started. So we'll hold a new and click to get texture coordinates, which is just going to return the zero to one values of our uh, of our texture. In fact, we can see how this works. If we switch over here to a plane, right click our texture coordinates and hit start previewing. We can see here that there is a black corner. That's, that's the zero zero point. And there's a yellow corner, which is the, the combination of green and red in uh, when we talk about textures and lighting. Oh, and, and light rather, as in, you know, screen light, LCD light. Red and green combined makes yellow. So this is our one, one point over here. And here we have zero, one, and here we have one, zero. It's just a, a matrix of, of two vectors, basically. Rather, the texture coordinate is a two vector. It returns an X and a Y value, which corresponds to a point somewhere in the UV layout of the uh, texture. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Um, check out any one of my other material, uh, material videos, and I'll probably explain it a little better than I just did. Uh, apologies for that. Anyway, we're going to grab our texture coordinates, hold an M and click for a multiply, then S and click for a scalar, and call this one UV multi. This will just multiply our UV values, make the clouds appear bigger or smaller uh, when, they're, when they're appearing out of the light. By default, we'll just set this to one because a value of zero will just return nothing. And then uh, feed this multiplier, our texture coordinates here, into a panner. If we hold in P and click, we get a panner. And I'll show you how a panel works. If we start previewing our cloud uh, texture, plug in our panel to the UVs and then just add some speed, say speed X. We can see what a panel does. It's just going to scroll the texture in any direction that we want. So one, one, obviously diagonally. Uh, any zero, one value is gonna go either up or down and we can set these to you know, slower values too. So slower on the horizontal and faster on the vertical if we want to. We have plenty of customization options here. And uh, we'll flesh that out so we can use it in a material instance as well. If we hold in S and click for the scalar parameter, call this one panner X, we'll duplicate this guy. This will be our panner Y. And we'll just leave these both at zero at the moment, but come out of any one of them and get an append, an append vector, which is just going to join these two values and produce a two vector uh, output, which we can plug into speed because speed has a two vector, speed X and speed Y. We don't have to worry about the other the other uh, options here. Just know that the speed, it, it expects an X and a Y value, and that's what we're going to provide to it. The result of our multiply from earlier goes to coordinate. So our texture coordinate calculation feeds into the coordinates of the panel, and it all should work just fine. There'll be no motion at the moment because our default, our default values are zero. But we can leave that as is for the time being and uh, move forward with our uh, material. So I'm just gonna grab all of this here and control W to duplicate it. 
and we'll plug this into our second texture just below. We need to change the names of these uh, scalars though, otherwise, uh, for example, the Panna X will affect both of these in our instance, even though they'll only be the one option. So we'll just uh, click these guys. I'm going to call this one the Mask Panna. There we go, Mask Panna. Do this right, attention to detail, put a little space in there. And the UV Multi, uh, we'll call it the Mask UV Multi. It'll sort of give ourselves a little more, little more room to play with here. And then that will avoid any, um, any conflicts there with the naming. And we can move forward. So holding M and click, we want to multiply these these two textures together. This will provide us with sort of a shaky movie, um, sort of a, uh, like the way the clouds kind of blend in and out of, of nothingness, <laughs> you know. Uh, but we'll also add a control to control how much this mask is going to show through. So uh, holding M and click for another multiplier. Connect this up to our first multiplier but before, then S and click for another scalar. Call this one the mask multi as opposed to the UV multi. This is just the multiply for the mask. And we'll set this uh, default value to one. There we go. And then getting close to our, <laughs> our material node here, we want to copy these two nodes, this multiply and this scalar, but basically just using multiply values for this whole, this whole, uh, this whole material. And this one will be the texture multi, like the actual uh, sort of strength of the textures themselves. So you know, texture multi. And the last thing that we'll do before we hit our node here, I might just move it. <laughs> uh, hold an L and click for a linear interpolate or a lerp node, which uh, will take in two values, an A and a B, and use a third value as an alpha that will gauge how much of A and how much of B is going to be outputted, uh, in this case, from this lerp node straight into emissive color. And we'll hold in one and click just for a constant. We don't need to affect this value. We just need to know, uh, we set it to one. We just need to know that in A, uh, it's going to be one. So the closer to A that this alpha value gets, uh, the closer to no clouds are going to appear. They'll just be, they'll just be bright. Uh, there'll, there'll be no, there'll be no clouds at all. And the result of this multiplier into the lerp. Then out of this alpha of the lerp, uh, we need a scalar, and this scalar can be called the texture lerp. Um, just leave it at zero for the time being, I think. So we'll save that. It's a, it's a fairly simple material, really. There's not much to it. Uh, we're just multiplying some textures together, uh, adding some UV controls, uh, which we could reduce down to a, a material function, like in my material function video. Uh, but with the sake of tutorial, blah, 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 we better put all the nodes down. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the material. So we'll hit save, uh, let that go save, and then back in our example map, we'll head to our light source, uh, the details panel and if we scroll down, I think it's near the bottom. Here we go We have a light function material. So with our clouds material here in the content browser So we're gonna right click make a material instance and then drag this onto our light function material So nothing will have changed uh, at this time because all of our these are set to zero and you can see that because uh, There's nothing here in our preview. It is just just white. So let's enable all of these check boxes here These are our scalars from the material. That's these green number uh, number nodes. They're being produced for us in our instance so that we can affect them uh, in real time. And the first thing we'll do, uh, if we set this to one, our texture lap to one, that means it's going to output 100% of B, which is our clouds. Uh, because our clouds are fairly dense. So see so what we can do here to brighten that up. I think our UVs need to, need to come up. Oh yeah, we'll also add some, some panna values. Yeah, multiplying them through each other. Uh, mask UV. Let's see, it can get bigger. Uh, get some nice big cloud shapes going. The value is lower than one. Uh, work quite well. And uh, slow cloud movement is probably for the best. Let's see, if we 0 0.05. 0 0.01. Hmm. We also go negatives. Uh, you know, negative values. Uh, let's see more UVs. We need to change down. And maybe the multi strength. <laughs> it's texture multi. Uh, 
Mask UV. Uh, that's for UVs. Uh, really, we're just we're just playing with values at this point. So the mask multiply. If we make that kind of low, and the texture multi. Let's play with some values here. Uh, even if we make these stop. Yeah, so we've got some cloud, some cloud shadows here on the ground. Um, what else can we do? So we can reduce our texture lab here to reduce the, the power of the clouds coming through. And then maybe if we add some very slight movements. And yeah, sort of blend. Blend some of these things together, and we get some nice, uh, nice cloud effects coming through. Maybe even our multi can come up a bit. There we go. That's looking a bit better, breaking up the clouds a little bit, a little more cloud-like. Yeah. So that's uh, that's how we use a simple light function to create some cloud shadows, and this will work in uh, in game as well. If we hit play, uh, if we'll be able to notice the clouds moving over the mannequin, you can kind of see it. And if I darken down the clouds, we'll be able to notice more. Um, let's bear with me. Where were we? The texture, texture lab. If we bring that up, bring that up a bit higher. You know, a nice radical sort of effect. So we can see uh, the light moving over, over the mannequin. So it's working exactly like you would expect uh, cloud shadows to work, you know? And that, uh, Brings me to the end of the end of the tutorial. Really, that's uh, pretty much all there is to all there is to know about. Um, oh, let's bring this, these values back down. I think it's our where is it? Yes, the texture multi. Uh, no, it was the lab. Bring the lab down. There we go. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Obviously, and uh, if you need to get in touch with me directly. The best way to do that is on Discord. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. And uh, if you would like to support the channel, uh, motivate me to release more videos, then you can make a one-time donation on PayPal. Or if you'd like to get something in return for your support, you can head over to my Gumroad store and uh, make a, a small purchase over there. Uh, until the next video though, guys, I'll see you then.